Welcome, everybody, to week 11. We're kind of going old school in the uh, Perry's Inside Scoop. Coach Babers is with us. And, Coach, you remember a day back in time. 11 was the number of games you played. And uh, so it's kind of a, it feels like a little bit of a, a throwback here to have an 11-game schedule this year. It really is. Back in the uh, 70s when I was in college and early 80s, it was an 11-game schedule. Uh, the amazing thing is, is that if you played a game versus Hawaii, that it did not count, and that was the rare moment where you went to 12 games. Unless you played at Hawaii, therefore, every year was a 12-game season. We ought to find somebody who played at Hawaii to talk about that sometime because that, that's a topic for another time. But I, the idea that everybody enjoyed the trip to come to Hawaii, I would imagine, to, uh, to play the Rainbow Warriors, and, and there you were, and, and uh, we'll table that for the time being. But talking about trips, and this week at South Bend, and I remember a couple years ago when Notre Dame was on the schedule, Yankee Stadium was great, and it was an awesome week in New York for all the different sports, and basketball was there too, and nobody regrets it. But I do remember you and others, I was among them too, saying, hey, it's kind of fun to go to South Bend. And that, that's an experience. Do, do you feel that now and sense that around your team that this is the, the real deal of, of playing Notre Dame? You know, I'm, I'm trying to talk to them. I, I, I think they do. The young guys are so young, they don't know it's not their fault. They're just young. But I think for the older guys, I think they understand the whole thing. Touchdown Jesus is getting an opportunity. You're getting an opportunity to play in a stadium where that stadium will always be here. And when you get older and you have kids and your grandpa or something, you can sit up and say you played in that stadium. When the game comes on on NBC, you're going to say, hey, I've played on that field before. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a big game. And I think for the way our season went that, you know, I'm excited that they're going to get an opportunity to play on a field like that. I didn't think we'd start with defense, but you, you brought it up. When you refer to touchdown, Jesus, I would think a, a defensive game plan is to try to turn it into field goal, Jesus, if at all possible. On defense, absolutely. But I'll tell you what, he does stand tall on the side of that building. <laughs> sure does. That is the uh, library at the, uh, the end of uh, Notre Dame Stadium. And uh, Notre Dame undefeated this year, Coach, and we can kind of get into their uh, personnel and, and that type of thing. But I, I was – I thought we'd in this last game really talk about your program and kind of team building. You know, it's well chronicled, hey – You've made it all the way through, knock on wood, to this uh, 11th kickoff, and that has not been common across college football. The, the last thing we saw was a, a few of these seniors coming out onto the field after the game, and it's not indicative of it. It doesn't mean that they can't or won't come back, and, and hopefully uh, they do what they want to do and what benefits the program, et cetera. But that's the emotional part, right? There's so much spent to be a, a major college football player. But what were we seeing there with – a couple of players embracing one another and, and really taking it in in the dome game Saturday. You know, I've I've said it many times. I'll I'll be glad. Emotional time for a football player. You don't you don't get to be ex baseball players get on intramural teams and hit home runs, and ex basketball players sign up for the 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 rec league or the the health club league and they hit three pointers, and everybody gets to see how good they were in college. Football's not like that, and. Uh, when you get done playing, you'll never play this game the same. Flag football is not the same. Playing in, playing in the backyard is not the same. And uh, when you put them away, you really, when you put the shoes away, there you're done. And uh, it's an emotional, it's an emotional time. And it's been an emotion, it's for everyone. It's been emotional. Everyone that's ever played the game that's hung them up, it's been a very emotional, stressful time. But isn't it specific to this season too? Because it's, Everybody knows it stinks. And yes, the disclaimer of it doesn't stink in the grand scheme of things. We all, you know, we're all healthy and for the most part and, and things we'd love to have uh, football in front of us, but it's been a lot of sacrifice. They, nothing has been normal for your group of a hundred plus players that I, it just feels to me like it's been more of a strain. And to a degree, we were, we're seeing some of that and, and the guys want an opportunity to sort of let that out. You know, I, I, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. The strain you talk about to me is growth. Every time that you people, or, and in myself, where I've, where I've had difficulties is where I've grown the most. And I really believe that these young men, whether it's on the football field with us next year or whether it is in life, this 2020 and the strain that you mentioned of continuing to come out and play this game week after week after week, regardless of the score, uh, 
for each other or for the benefit of the university or themselves, uh, I think that'll stay with them forever. And I think that is going to be their strengths, not their weaknesses when this is all said and done. You know, one of the highlights of the NC State game is a kickoff return touchdown, the, the first one in roughly a decade here. Is that a team building play? It's a freshman who runs it back basically untouched. But I know you had to spend some time in the film room and say, hey, here's a block that kind of opened a hole. Here's everybody running down to give him a convoy and to celebrate. That, that seems like a play for me that, that's a bounce. You know, it's, it's one of those plays I think you can build off of. I mean, obviously, he was not our lead returner, and something had happened in the team, and, and the team, being unselfish, had tapped himself out of the play, which gave Trevor his opportunity. And, uh, you know, and Trevor took the, took the opportunity and literally ran with it and didn't stop until he crossed the end zone. And I, I don't know, was 117 games or something like that or, or how long it's been without a kickoff return. But it, it was good to see. And it was and I'll tell you what, it couldn't have happened at a better moment uh, them being able to take the opening drive and score on, I would say, some questionable penalties that came back and they agreed with us after we turned them in on Monday and then and to come back and balance that score seven seven and let them know that we are going to play today. Uh, couldn't happen at a better time. I don't mean to make this the postgame show for NC State, but I, I just think it, it's bringing out a few uh, topics for us to discuss. And one is that you played a lot of that game from the lead. Your opening possessions this year have not been fruitful for the most part. What's it like to kind of be out in front? And, and is that does it help you at all when you talk about going to compete with, with Notre Dame if, if you're mindful uh, early in the game of the right things? I think everybody's trying to get off fast, but that, you, you know how it's like a boxing match. You know, you throw out a jab, you, you throw out a cross, and, you know, the jab is just to measure the guy up. The cross, you really don't expect it to get there early. But uh, I like playing from the league, I, lead. I'd rather play from the lead than from behind. But uh, the bottom line is it's a four-quarter game, and obviously – you have to play it all the way to the end. All right, Notre Dame, uh, we alluded a little bit to the mystique of it. And it's just that this year they got something a little special. Everything is clicking, and uh, Notre Dame beat Clemson famously, and uh, they're rolling. From one kind of X and O standpoint here, how do you corral a team that is maybe a little more unique than some you've seen? They'll play three tight ends quite a bit, and uh, the quarterback is very capable of doing a lot of different things. You know, I, I don't know the answer to that question. When you, when you look at the quarterback, uh, he's thrown for about a 63% clip, and he's only thrown one interception with, I don't know, a dozen touchdown passes. That proficiency is off the charts, off the charts. And then you turn that around with a quarterback that's mobile. He can run the football, and he can escape the rush, and he's got those, those six meanies up in front protecting him like, you know, that, that, like that that's their egg. And that's a mother hen. I mean, they are really, really good on offense. And that's not taking anything away from their running backs. They had a running back go 60 yards. Wide receivers. And, what, and their defense is ranked better than their, higher than their offense is. So uh, this is really a complete football team. And, uh, you know, this might be the best football team we've played uh, in the ACC in a long time. Yeah, sure. I mean, and, and it's fair to say that they beat Clemson head to head, albeit uh, Clemson was playing without a couple of defensive players in that game. And the last thing, coach, I would ask you to, to share with us here in the, the Perry's inside scoop is just how you sum all this up for your team this week. The challenge is clear, but it's an opportunity. It's uh, maybe a fun, I don't want to know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it seems to me like a fun way to end the year in, in this kind of environment. And, and just what are you thinking in that team room? No, well, I'm thinking this. I wouldn't have it any other way. You, you could finish the game with somebody that was 0-11 uh, and, and go, oh, we're going to go out and win our first win. Or you can go out and play somebody that's 10-0 and 0 and go, hey, let's see what we can do. Let's see how we can measure up. The reason we play in the ACC Atlantic is we, we enjoy playing the Clemsons, the Florida States, the Louisvilles. We enjoy playing those people. And uh, when we cross over and we get to play a Miami, uh, that's awesome. When we go out and play LSU, let's go. Okay, now we get another opportunity at Notre Dame. So, unfortunately, I've been in it for a long time. I've only, got, I've only found one win against those guys, and it was not at home. It was on the road. They're a tall, tall task, and they're very, very difficult to beat at home.
Well, the last time the Syracuse program played in South Bend, it wasn't going great as far as the season was concerned, but the Oranges uh, came out on top and found a way. So maybe you can do it again uh, this week, Coach. We appreciate the, the time and the candor and best of luck. Thank you, Matt. Orange head coach Dino Babers with us all season long here in the Perry's Inside Scoop.